What up, players? It's Warboss Terry up in this mood. We've been doing a lot of Empire recently, so I thought I'd cleanse my palette with a little tutorial on their neighbors from the north, the uh, Chaos Marauder. So this is a Chaos Marauder converted from a Marauder with a flail. I just chopped off the top of his flail and um, added on a, this mace head to make a two-handed weapon. Did the same for all of my Marauders, like this guy, same thing, mace head. And uh, this guy's got got an axe head. So the great thing about the Marauder box set is it, it these are all supposed to be one-handed weapons, and all I did was I just chopped off the top of the one-handed weapons and glued it to the top of the, the flails to make two-handed weapon. Um, not sure if this head is from the Marauder or from the Marauder Horseman set, but I thought I'd do this model because it's got like a cape, it's got a bunch of detail on it, and uh, I thought it'd be fun to paint. So this is my how to paint War Boss tutorial on painting a two-handed weapon wielding Chaos Marauder with the Mark of Corn, which is why he's got uh, the red gauntlets and the red uh, scattered across his, his, his uh, little equipment, all of his equipment. <coughs> So hope you like it. This is just part one of the two-part video. The second part I'm gonna is gonna be after these washes have dried, and uh, today our, all we're doing is getting through to the end of the washes. And part two will be all the details, highlighting, um, putting him on an actual base, and all of that stuff. So thanks for watching. Hope you're enjoying, and uh, stay tuned for more. Okay, so here we have our Chaos Marauder, and. Um, Let's get started painting him. First, we're going to paint his skin, the Heneb Stone. And check it out, I bought a brand new brush. So we'll see how long this lasts. And I'm actually gonna be using a, it says fine detail brush. It's probably not, not the best for this since we're just doing base coats. If you've got a base coat brush or something that's a little bit bigger, that'll work fine too. But, uh, yeah, I might just put this one back. What was I thinking? Probably just thinking, I'm gonna start with a brand new brush. Okay, let's see if I've got another one I can use. <coughs> Character, no. Uh, here we go. A nice big brush for base coating. It's actually called the Citadel Base Coat Brush. This is perfect for us. So remember, since this is a foundation paint, you want to cut it, thin it down with some water. You're not only painting the skin, you're also going to be painting any fur trim on your Marauder's boots. So step one is like fur trim and skin. So I've read in a couple places that the hotness is big hordes of Chaos Marauders with the Mark of Corn um, in a unit that is that comes in with Wolfric or Wolfric the Wanderer. He comes to wash and wipe your windows um, and sneak up on your opponent and just cause mayhem in their back ranks. Kind of a one-trick pony, but um, they're quite durable, quite resilient, and they're really strong once you get them once you get them back there. So I thought, oh, you know, this is a pretty popular unit, so it might be fun to paint one up, or Boste style. So I hope you guys like it. If 
your guy has a helmet that has horns, or you've got any other bone areas on your model, then you can hit that up with den of stone at the same time. Unless you want to do like silver horns, but I kind of like these tiny little bone horns on the helmet. It's cute. Make sure you turn your model all different angles so you can get good even coverage. You don't miss any places. I built my guy with the cape, you don't need to. Chaos is also really great because all the kits are interchangeable. You could give this guy a, a helmet of a knight, or you could give him a... What I love to do is because the Marauder Horsemen only come with five full figures, so you could use... But they come with a bunch of heads, so I've been substituting a bunch of Marauder heads, uh, Marauder Horsemen heads into my regular unit of Marauders, just because the old ones... <coughs> The ones that come with the models, they look very, they look very old to me. I don't really like them. And this is the reason why we're painting the skin first, because if we painted the helmet first, even though it's easier to get to, his face inside, we would have ruined the helmet when we were trying to paint the face inside the helmet. <clears throat> so, skin and fur trim. Next, we're going to be painting um, ba, 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 ba. Let's do the pants. The pants is going to be Calvin Brown. So we're looking again for nice, smooth, even coverage. So we're going to do Calvin Brown. I believe the pants are it. Yeah, now that you don't have to worry about painting the base for your gold metallics, it's just so awesome. Next, we're going to be painting in the reds. So, the trick with reds is you don't go too vibrant, too bright and too colorful. I found that uh, using bright colors like blood red, for example, make your model look really garish. Like the reds are just too bright. They don't look like, like the blood god would be happy with them. They look like freshly spilt blood. And I think this dark flesh red color, or whatever the, uh, oh, I don't know what the new equivalent is, but this dark flesh is much more realistic. Coloring the insides of the gauntlets, but it's really up to you when and where on the model you paint <laughs> your red colors. I'm also going to be painting the three, or the, uh, the strips of material over the, the loin cloth. I 
I don't think every marauder has this, but I'm basically when I'm when I'm painting a figure, my philosophy is these are the colors I want to use. Now where on the model can I can I put those colors? So dark flesh for the reds, a lot of different browns, and so forth. Next we're gonna paint Kemri Brown into a bunch of different things. For example, the uh, the belt and the straps. Around this guy's waist, around the guy's shoulders, especially if you're using a guy that doesn't have a cloak. Just hit this belt up and get the strap all the way around the shoulders with this Camry Brown color. If you make a mistake and you get it on the, the skin, don't worry, you can just go back right over with your uh, denim stone. Also, we're going to be hitting the shoes with this Kemri Brown. I was planning on making these guys up in a <clears throat> infantry base, you know, regiment base, I mean, so having it be like four wide, but uh, I might not do that anymore. That's why this guy doesn't have a base. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I might just put this guy on a regular square base to get him done. Um, <clears throat> last thing you're gonna hit is oh, we forgot the staff of the weapon. We're gonna use Kemri Brown for, or uh, sorry, Calvin Brown for that. So I'm going to clean up the mistakes that I made, and in the next part of the video, we will uh, do the metallics, finish up the cape, and uh, get on, hopefully, to the washes. We can actually start the cape now, I think. For the liner of the cape, just like our Knight of the White Wolf, we're going to use Rackard Flesh. For the outside, <clears throat> Camry Brown. Okay, so metallic wise, <clears throat> we're gonna start with the silver, which is good old chain mail. This is gonna be the uh, head of whatever weapon you're using. So if it's an axe, then the axe head. Uh, right here I'm using this mace. And this is a conversion. All of my, oops, all of my marauders are conversions because the box kit does not come with two-handed weapons for your marauders. So what you're going to need to do is um, the arms that they have holding the flails, I believe, and cut off the flail heads and replace them with other other weapon heads. <coughs> so it requires a little bit of work, but it's like a really super simple conversion. Okay, next we're gonna uh, paint the bottom of the weapon. Yeah, like, like I said, the conversion is really simple. Anyone can do it. It's a great way to um, for new painters and modelers, hobbyists to uh, get a feel for what you know what it takes to convert in kit bash. And if you're a rookie to the hobby, then kit bash basically means taking two existing kits that don't come together and um, taking bits and pieces and moving them around.
I love conversions, I love uh, kit bashing models. Uh, next thing we're going to get is our warriors. Um, I guess these leg armor pieces down here. <clears throat> What would you call these? Are these greaves? When they say armor greaves. G R E A V E S. I think so. Can't tell. I'm not a historical armor buff. I'm also gonna get the top of the armor pieces, but I'm not gonna color the skull. I'm gonna color the skull in gold in just a little bit. Just getting the uh, majority of the armor down here. Okay, so model should look something like that. We're going to take our Balthazar gold now. <laughs> Just realized something. Is that like a clever play on the name Balthazar Gelt, who is the supreme patriarch of the Colleges of Magic? Because if so, kudos to you, Games Workshop. Notice that till just now. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of looking at the metal and deciding what I want to be this gold color and what is going to remain silver. What I've found is the viewer's eye is naturally going to be drawn to whatever there is less of. It's like supply and demand in real life. If you have less gold than silver on your model, or if the silver shines, uh, I mean it's more prominently displayed, like the helmet because everybody likes looking at a model's face. The weapon. Then um, the gold will stand out much more. guy is just about <clears throat> just about done with the base coats that is it's gonna clean up some some parts and then we're gonna send him send him to the base uh, send him to get some washes done okay our model should be looking something like this we'll do a quick turnaround at this point um, skin, then of stone, lots of different browns, gold, detailing, and um, very prominent silver with the chainmail. So <clears throat> now we're going to do the washes, which are my favorite. So ogre and flesh are the new, uh, is it rake lender flesh? I'm not sure what the new flesh wash is, but all the washes are pretty good. Or the new shades, I mean. Except for the cap that they come in. That leaves some things to be desired, I feel. Stupid pop. 
spots. Okay, make sure you hit it from all directions. Not just one direction. Stupid boy band. Watch out, uh, watch out that your shade or your wash doesn't get into uh, another surface besides the skin. You don't want it going on your cloak there. We're going to use known oil and make sure it doesn't spill all over us. Oh, okay. Woo. We are going to wash the uh, pants, the boots, and the weapon and any silver. Silver and browns. Like the belt, the sash. Oh, shucks. Try not to get it on the back of the cloak, though. Or the, the cloak liner, as it were. I like these models. I've mostly always seen them painted really cartoony, bright, and like, you know, people don't really care about painting their core troops up to a good standard, I would say. Uh, overall, there are some people who really put the effort in, it really shows, but overall most people just want to get these guys on the board and, you know, they kind of just go through it really quickly, but I say take the time, learn how to do it right, and then if you want later, then just do it, you know, halfway. But like learn how to control your brush and to make the make the paint do what you want it to do and go where you want it to go on the model. Learn how shading affects the uh, color of whatever you paint and how much you need to do an effective job. Uh, I'm also going to be hitting these wristbands, getting that known oil color into the wristbands, create some nice shading, and here we go, the wooden handle of the weapon. up to the head. A 
Oh, somebody asked me what uh, species my dog was. Sorry, I, I don't think I answered. It's a Chihuahua mix. It's my little baby termagant. Okay, we're also going to use Devlin mud. Or, what I'm going to use next, I'm going to try using the new Devlin mud, which is called um, Agrax Earth Shade. Never opened it before, brand new bottle, so let's pop the seal on the sides and try this baby out. Ooh. It's very uh, caramel colored. Not as dark and dirty as Devlin Mud was. It's much more like chocolate colored. Can you tell I'm hungry? Caramel? Chocolate? Yeah, it's got a very beef stew kind of color to it. So I like it. Uh, I am going to add some known oil though. To give it a little kick, but we can paint this Agrax Earth Shade onto the liner. Give it a nice little shade and definition there. Yeah, check that out. That looks pretty cool. Gives it a aged kind of fur pelt kind of feel. So I'm gonna. Pop in a little bit of known oil for the cloak. Get it to mix with our Agrax Earth Shade and the folds and the recesses. I'm trying not to leave too much. I'll leave just enough in the in the shadows, to, or in the in the recesses to simulate shadows. It's a fine line, you gotta figure out for yourself what works best for you, where is the balance for you. So for me it's about there. <clears throat> I left some of that known oil in where the guy's eyes are, so you can really see that the shade went into the eyes because there's no way I'm going to be able to get a brush in there to do his eyeballs. So I'm just going to leave it like that. You can see how the known oil and the, the ogre and flesh have already started to, to do its magic. It seems like guy's wearing a necklace right here. I think all the Chaos Marauders have this kind of sculpted around their necks to make it look like you can paint the necklace so that it doesn't seem like such a weird join for the head. So I'm going to paint that up as a, as a necklace in just a little bit. <clears throat> Once the, um, the ogren flesh is dried, I'm going to give it one more application, just like the first time. I'm going to wash it off. Well, wash it one more time. Get some of that ogren flesh wash in the recesses. Make him a little darker. And then when we come back, we're going to begin with the highlighting. So stay tuned for that, and uh, we will uh, see you in that second part of the video. Thank you. 